Hey everyone, Duke Nougat 3D here, and it's been a while since I've had a noteworthy piece of diving equipment to review in my collection, but for today I have one that has been on my bucket list for quite some time, and I know I say that a lot with things that, I've get, the things that I get here and there, but this is definitely one that I've had my eye on for a while, but due to the expenses I was not able to procure it, but thanks largely in part to Moolage I was able to acquire it, and do forgive the... Uh, the lengthy, eloquent German words, which I'm probably going to butcher on pronunciation in this review, because today I have for you the Drega R168 Volga 6 mask mit Kopfhaube für Trockentauch Anzug, which roughly translates to, if I even got the pronunciation right, Drager R168 full face mask with hood for dry suit. Um, so, don't have a really big history on these. The R168 series masks were Draeger's spiritual successor to the previous R60 mask, which was already well famous by that point. And the R60 was notable for its very high buoyancy level. It was essentially a giant pocket of air inside the face piece, and it was... Uh, it did not have any internal provisions to perform the Valsalva maneuver to equalize pressure on the ears due to water pressure. Uh, and there was just a lot to improve. It was not a very modular design and thing. And any modifications for <clears throat> microphones and other accessories had to be done at the factory. Uh, so this was the next step up and was a means to m sort of modify off of the R60 principles while making it a mo more modular design. What the R168 improved was, for the one, the main thing, there was no internal dead space inside the mask. There was much, or at least there was very little of it compared to the R60's, like, large triangular bubble of air inside. Uh, the vision was improved by bringing the lens closer to the face piece. It had two ports on either side as a default, which could be unclamped and switched out, I presume also at the factory, but nevertheless it had the ability to without cutting holes in the rubber. Um, it also provided a provision on the front for a standard two-hose regulator or single hose possibly. I'm not entirely sure. Um, this also had to be cut. This is the one portion of the mask that had to be cut in order to fit a regulator. And I will go on a limb and say that these cannot fit standard U.S. scuba regulators. This, these are only for Draeger ones, which had a wider spout, I am told. Um, it also had a more comfortable six-point harness arrangement, which was more easily adjustable. And other than that, it didn't improve... Too much else, it used a lot of the same accessories as the R60, such as the PA38 regulator, which you see here, um, which my example on, uh, of this regulator has been modified with a standard US first stage scuba hose. So it is completely compatible with all standard uh, US diving equipment, but uh, it is obviously 40 millimeter DIN threaded or NATO threaded, whichever you prefer to say. So that is another thing that remained consistent from the R60 is that this mask is also 40 millimeter DIN threaded. So it can just as easily thread onto standard gas mask filters, but it uh, does not have an outlet valve being that it is for a uh, Draeger regulator. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that personally or anticipate buying this as a, as a gas mask because it is not a gas mask. And with the $300 price tag on these, I don't see why you would want to you know spend that much for that when you can get something like an avon c50 or whatever but i'm i'm getting into points that shouldn't even need to be made so um first thing i'd like to mention uh or actually before i get into the review uh, i should also mention that the german navy extensively used these as did the dutch navy and in fact everything here is ex dutch navy although it is exactly the same as the ones the german used so uh, i don't know if any other um countries, navies, or militaries use this mask. It was a very popular mask, like the R60, so I would not doubt that a bunch of other nations would have used this mask, or at least purchased it commercially from Draeger, because I do believe these were available commercially. And in my opinion, it's probably one of the more modular diving masks out there, at least for its period, because not only do you have these you know, standard second stage regulator capabilities, you could modify these ports to accept rebreather hoses. Obviously, you had this port on the front that you could cut out for using a standard um, mouthpiece second stage regulator and there was a variety of accessories regarding the lens that you can change out but I'll get into that in a moment. So getting into the actual kit itself let's start off with the carrier here. This carrier is not original to this. This is not even a West German carrier. This is a uh, East German carrier as some of you keenly eyed in military I might be able to know so but uh, I don't really have any masks that go with this carrier and I just have it around and it is very convenient to carry these German diving masks as what I've repurposed it for. In here the seller that I bought this off of um, was kind enough to provide a spare head harness so this is what you uh, this is what you, uh, getting a good look at what a spare head harness would look like new in the packaging with the uh, 
you know, the serial codes and labels and whatnot. So not too much special to mention about that. And I, uh, let's get into the actual face piece itself, which I'll probably remove from the hood uh, and just kind of go in depth. I'll probably remove this regulator first. This is going to be a big pain in the ass to have to manipulate. And if you want to know more about the PA38 and just the PA style regulators in general, you can go ahead and check out my uh, R60 review. I'll leave that down in the description as always. And pretty typical, as you can see, it's 40 millimeter, fits onto standard DIN threads, has a purge button in the center. Not much to say about it. As I've mentioned before, I've modified this one with a standard U.S. scuba hose, so it can fit on any American uh, first stage regulator. And I also forgot to mention the dust cap for the regulator, which just screws on like so. So nothing special to mention about that. Now, getting into the face piece, uh, I want to mention, some, mention something about the lens that I'm not entirely sure of, because as you can see, this is the fixed lens variant of the R168, uh, and I don't, there, there seem to be a couple different variations of this lens assembly. There's this one, obviously, which is fixed, and there's one which is hinged, which uh, basically the uh, lens is actually sandwiched up against this lip of rubber around the outside, and then there is a a threaded latch uh, and a uh, hinge on the other side that you can open up that window so you can breathe on the surface when you're not diving so you can conserve air. Um, so that that is a feature I would have liked to have, but I'm still very thankful to have one of these because these are undoubtedly very rare in the United States and I had to pay a lot of money to get one in here. Um, so the regarding the designations, because there, there's two different designations for this mask. There's R6, R168 and then there's KV168. The KV168 designation, I believe, only applies to the variant with the hinged lens because the hinged lens frame accessory is known as something like a clap fenster, something like that. So I would presume that the KV stands for clap fenster Volga 6 mask which is mostly just a rough estimate. I'm not entirely sure if that's the case. If I'm wrong on that, feel free to provide info down in the comments that you know confirms whether or not that's the case. But that's the biggest, uh, that, that's, the, that's the greatest inkling I have on that. So that's the way, the way I personally differentiate between the two. It may not be correct, so I would not get in the habit of doing that personally. Just uh, uh, For now, I'm just gonna refer to them as the R168. But again, if I'm correct or incorrect, feel free to let me know. So, the interesting thing about this lens is that it has this little, uh, it's a polycarbonate lens, obviously, and it has this integrally molded nose pocket here, which uh, is, sur is purely there just to provide extra room for people with larger noses. I don't need this personally. Um, it does serve as a little bit of a distraction, so it is kind of the, one of the factors of this mask that I don't like personally, but everything else about this mask I absolutely love. Uh, the interesting thing about the harness is this is probably one of the only uh, diving masks with a six-point head harness, which you don't really see too often. Uh, the top two straps, as per usual with Draeger's diving masks, are completely fixed and non-adjustable, not that you needed them to be, because this is meant to be worn outside of dry suit hoods, and uh, you don't need that a great degree of adjustment when most of the contact of the seal is maintained through the hood itself. Uh, so those are fixed in place, and obviously these have replacement harnesses, so you can replace them. I'm not entirely sure how. I think you're just supposed to bend the little D-rings into place. So uh, the temple straps are held in place with a nut and bolt. I'm, I'm pretty sure not all of these do that. A lot of them seem to use a fixed split pin or, what, or a flattened pin to hold them in place. But this, this particular example uses a nut and bolt, which may be a replacement because there does seem to be a lot of parts serviced on this mask, which I'll get into in a moment as well. And then the cheek straps below are fixed in place, interestingly, on the inlet or, or the uh, port assemblies there. As you can see, there's a little bit of a uh, loop there where the pin fits through to secure the buckle. So very interesting design choice where there's very minimal contact with the rubber of the face piece and all of the tension is held on the hardware. It works, but it's just kind of interesting to see because you don't see a lot of full face masks that do this concept. The buckles, I will say, are modified by myself. The uh, rollers here are actually black plastic Israeli buckles because the original rollers are made out of brass. And not that there was anything wrong with them. They weren't corroded or damaged or anything. But I just re felt that replacing the brass buckles with these black plastic ones would have been th a better choice. Because obviously, if, you're, if I'm going to be using this as a diving mask, having uh, any brass components which could corrode if they're not thoroughly washed, and obviously those are very small components where... Uh, any degree of uh, 
uh, you know, liquids could get trapped into those and potentially corrode and not get washed out properly. Um, it's better to have more plastic pieces in this case. So that's, I just felt the creative liberties and had to do that. I can switch it back at any point. So it is a non-destructive, non-invasive modification just for just putting that on the record. But, uh, it, and it makes no difference really, cause it's the same me uh, mechanical principle. It's the same type of roller. It's just, this one's made out of plastic. The originals were made out of brass. So um, it's basically like an Israeli model number four harness because obviously the Israeli model number four masks were cloned from the Draeger simplex. So it's just your typical Draeger style buckle where you lift that tab and it loosens it and you just pull on the end of the tab and it tightens it. And this is a bigger, this is, this is way more advantageous than the older R60 buckles, which were made entirely out of a spring loaded brass. And it was just a pain in the ass to adjust those. It was probably the stiffest buckles that I've ever dealt with on a full face mask. Meanwhile, these are just a breeze to operate, just like a gas mask, really. Um, not really much else to say externally about the mask. Uh, looking back at the head harness, you may notice this large cutout in the center of the head pad, and that is because this was to accommodate a pressure relief valve that would be integrated into some dry suit hoods. This one does not have one, but I, I've seen a lot of photographs of dry suit hoods similar to this that have a pressure relief valve on the top of the scalp, and that is what that hole is for. And on the back of the head harness, you can obviously see a Dreigerwerk logo printed right onto there, just molded right on. And I will get onto the interior of the mask, because that is where all the interesting bits are. Because this, uh, this mask doesn't have a lot to it, but what it does have is very, very peculiar, but very fascinating nonetheless. So I will remove it from the head here and invert the harness. Give me one moment, folks. This takes a few minutes. Yeah, it's sticking together because it's all rubber. I should also mention that I don't know what type of rubber this is made out of. Knowing that the Germans don't really have a big supply of natural rubber, I would assume it's just some sort of artificial rubber. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which type it is, probably EPDM or something. Uh, it does not feel like uh, butyl or silicone or anything like that. It's a very, uh, I, I don't know what, how, how to describe it, but it's, it, it's definitely artificial rubber. Almost definite. But anyways, here is the interior of the mask, which looking at it, you can really tell that this mask was built much like just a standard oval shaped diving mask. However, they added this external, this uh, breathing portion below it. So it's literally just an oval diving mask that they extended the face seal down to cover the chin so that there is this breathing chamber. And this is one of the more interesting aspects of the mask because this little lip here um, seals above, like in between the nose and mouth. Whereas this chamber here, this little breathing vestibule is reserved entirely for the lips. And the reason they did it this way is because as you recall with the older R60 mask, you had no provisions to pinch your nose and equalize the mask um, so you had to wear nose clips inside the face piece at all times whereas with this um, since your nose is automatically cut off with this dam here since this is constantly pressing up against your lips and there's no air able to enter this lens cavity um, what you would do if you needed to equalize your ears, you would just press the mask tighter against your face and you would exhale out through your nose. And obviously, since there's no way for the air to escape, um, it would automatically balance the pressure in your ears. Um, so that's a very interesting and, and, and very uh, ingenious feature that they decide to include in this mask design. Uh, you may also notice this um, secondary lip here. I'm not entirely sure why they felt the need to include this in the mold, but my greatest inkling is that this is purely so that this mask can be patched onto a hood. However, it is cut very short here, so I'm not entirely sure if that's uh, the length that at the factory that it would have had for patching on to dry suit hoods or if this is just cut afterwards because they realized they were selling this without the intent to patch it onto the, to a hood. So I'm not entirely sure, but that's what that's essentially there for. And then they had this weird groove, this little, uh, I, I want to call it a hook, but it's really more of sort of a dimple that you know, protrudes inwards on the chin. I'm not entirely sure what that's there for either. It does, it's not really uncomfortable at all, and I don't notice it while wearing it, but it's just kind of a weird feature that there's just this inwards-facing dimple on the chin piece uh, that's just, just a solid uh, hemispherical chunk of rubber that's just butting up against the underside of your chin. So, again, not uncomfortable for me. I just felt like pointing that out. Um, and looking inside the, the mouth vestibule, as I call it, you can see the blanking port on one side and you can see the, uh, the inlet port on the other, which has some 
uh, weird plastic ribs around it. I'm not totally sure what the purpose of that is, but it's there, I guess, to prevent anything from blocking off the hole. Uh, you have some markings on the interior. Uh, in the mouthpiece port, if you were using this with a regulator, you see a stamp here that says T40444, probably a serial code or something. And then below that, you have the manufacturer's date clock roundel, which I'm not entirely sure if the camera will pick up properly. But that it, that says uh, number five, which could be a month of the year, could be couldn't uh, could also not be. But the date for sure, the year of manufacture is 1992. So this is a very late manufactured mask, considering I assume that these were introduced in the late. 60s, early 70s, possibly, but um, very popular mask that definitely saw a lot of service. Interior of the harness, you can on the opposite side, you can see another date roundel, which you can see a P up here, which is why I'm not entirely certain that five is a month of manufacture, but just something else. But then you see the year here is 1980. So this is an older stock harness, which means that the parts on this mask were definitely serviced at some point. And you can see it's just some general wear and uh, pitting on the metal from just being bashed around and used and all that. So this thing definitely did see use, but really all of the signs of use are on the metal parts and the rubber is in impeccable condition. The rubber looks, it was like brand new when I got it. So uh, I'm not entirely sure why that's the case, but I'm, I'm very welcome to it because everything is very serviceable and able to be used. So that being said, I'll probably wrap up the review here. If you give me one moment to get it back on the head and I will uh, cut to the chase. Uh, give me one moment here. Uh, very difficult to get on the head. Forgive me. All right. Probably scratching the hell out of this rubber. I'll clean it up later. So that's basically the entirety of the review on the Draeger R168. Probably my favorite purchase this year. Um, well, not, this, not maybe not this year, but this, definitely this month. So very happy to show this off for you. Um, I'll hopefully be able to dive with this sometime in the future. I'm not sure when. Obviously, it's winter here, and this is only going to be used for very shallow diving operations. So nothing very fanciful, because I, obviously I'm not scuba certified. I know uh, Moulaj is, and he's probably going to be helping me out with a lot of this. But this was, uh, I, even aside from that, I want one of these for a very long time so i'm very happy to have one now thank you to again to moulage for helping me afford this and uh, for um the person who was so kind to sell this to me so that being said i'm duke new with 3d if you have any if you have any comments questions corrections or concerns drop them down in the comments below and i'll see you all later